And that's not what Carl or your dad gave their lives to create. But it kept you and RJ safe. We have to protect the people we love. All the people we love. And we will. Welcome to Knock Pro Nation. Welcome back, guys. I'm Jarrell. And I'm Josh. And today we're here to give our review of episode 14. Walking Scars. Dead. Scars. And um, finally, we finally get... The revelation of these scars and to be honest yes this was a very dark dark story but it was kind of like at the end when it was done i was like i was thinking about something different but it still honed into my original theory about someone coming into the community and doing this to yeah. them somehow which forced michonne to change her mindset to cut off so the it, whole episode was good how it switched from flashback and it kind of like Correlated with flashback to current, flashback to current, which is really cool. See, I think there's another reason why, um, not just letting that group in um, that did it, and we'll kind of go over the the basics of it. But I think there was another reason, and I'll bring it up after we talk about it. But um, so, why was Michonne so closed off? Well, we go into a flashback, um, and uh, I, I do want to point out before we get into the meat of this, the scene where she is looking for Rick. Oh yeah. Amazing. Legit. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, because we knew that Daryl was out there looking for, her, mm -hmm. looking for him, um, looking for Rick. Um, but, and we kind of figured obviously Michonne would do the same, but to see that, and she did it for a long period of time. For I think they both did. I think they both did. Yeah, absolutely. Did, yeah. You know? I mean, even Daryl says to her, um, He's not here. I, I will be out here yeah. until I find something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we we see the cool part of her finding his gun. Um, it was kind of a cool part where she turned over that walker thinking maybe this is him. And she yeah, turned it over dude, and, like, and just knowing that it's not. But just the fact of, okay, I'm seeing somebody similar kind of clothing to what he wore. Not exact, but you just, you're just you just trying to be sure. That hurts, you know? Dude. It does hurt. It hurts because... You know, at this point, they've accepted the fact that look, we're going to find a zombified Rick, and possibly, and and they want to find it so they can get closure on it. Yeah. Um. And and I love the how Daryl said to her, "He's not here. I've taken this all the way out to the ocean. To the ocean. The dude went to the, the dude went we, that far. Yeah. Yeah. And like he's it, and he's been out there. And I, you know, I love the fact that even Michonne asks him, "Are you okay with being alone?" And he's like. Yeah, I'm okay with it. We knew that answer yeah. was coming. But when he asked her, no. I mean, she's got, I mean, this woman's like eight not eight months pregnant almost probably. Gotta be at but, least. But, I mean, she's, yeah, about to pop, but she's not, she's not good with it. I mean, it's, she's not technically alone. She has Judith. She has other people, but this is Rick. You know, this is and, Rick. And that kind of, about. and that kind of feeds into the story that's coming up yeah. is she, uh, Alexandria comes upon a group of outsiders and takes them in. And, and one of them was an old friend. It turns out that the main person of that group, the leader, I'll say. Jocelyn. Uh, Jocelyn is an old friend of hers. From college. I think even high school. It, yeah. I, I, I they, were, they were kind of talking and it sounded like, because I think they mentioned college and then I thought they may have mentioned maybe I high school. I thought so too. But I thought it was maybe, either way, like she said she hadn't seen her in like we're, 15 years. Yeah, we're talking an old, close friend. Close. And it was Jocelyn who noticed noticed her first, Michonne first. She said Michonne, and she's like, Jocelyn? And you see the look on her face. She now, lit up. I guarantee a lot of you fans, out viewers out there, we were like, okay, are we supposed to know who this woman is? Like, yeah. did we miss her in a previous episode? I was thinking, I was like, did I miss her in a previous episode? Who the heck is this? Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, no. I like, once I have it, I was like, I get it now. I get, I get where the story's going. I knew exactly <laughs> who it was, and that was Tara from True Blood. <laughs> yes, True Blood fans would know who she is. I don't watch. I never watched True Blood, so I wouldn't recognize. It's an awesome show. So. I know that's what you told me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so um, there's another scene where Jocelyn and Michonne are in Michonne's house, and and they're talking. They're and, watching the community, like the kids together, yeah, telling the kids stories. Are all they're playing, playing games together. and stuff. The kids yeah. are all playing together, yeah. and yeah. Jocelyn and Michonne start reminiscing on an old 
mm-hmm. an old um, moment that they had back in college or high school. Yeah. It's at this moment that Michonne turns to her and says, I'm so happy you're here. Yeah. And like that was a moment where you really understood like you felt her emotion. Yeah. She's out there looking for her lost lover. And finally, she she's alone. And finally, mm-hmm. she has someone that she can relate to. A close friend. Yeah. And even Jocelyn told her, I know what you're doing out there. You're trying to find your man. Continue to do it. Don't stop, basically. You know, giving her encouragement. And the whole time, I'm like, man, something's going to happen. Like, mm-hmm. Michonne's going to, like, she's, she's le- allowing herself to feel attached to somebody. She's going to let her guard down. Something terrible is going to happen. And... Uh, unfortunately it does, uh, after their sleepover, because they also had a couple of Alexandria kids sleepover as well with Judith, they go to Jocelyn's house and they're gone. They're, they're missing. The medical supplies are gone. The food stash is gone. The kids are gone. They, they killed somebody, but the person who killed them, little itty bitty feet of blood leading to the sewer. Do you know what it reminded me of? Um, Children of the Corn? (laughs) <laughs> the, well, that Lord, Lord and, of the Flies <laughs> and uh, Game of Thrones. Like, yeah, uh, what's his little little birds? Uh huh. Yeah, insane. Like, yeah, like the, the little kids that are you know kill people. Yeah, like, yeah. It was just. But did you freaky. catch? So before we got to that scene, did you catch when Michonne was walking by the sewer and they had it locked down? Yeah. So in present time, that sewer was locked down. You could never get in there ever again because of that situation of those kids and Jocelyn escaping through those sewers. Yeah. Which, Ugh. honestly, I'm surprised it wasn't locked down sooner. I mean, that's yeah. where they took refuge during Negan's attack. Yeah, not surprising that they you know escaped through the sewer, but I thought it was kind of cool how it, in present time, you know, she basically locked that thing down due to those events. Um, so they actually... Uh, you know what... I'm sorry, you know. but isn't it crazy how much that sewer's been used? Yeah. Like, even Maggie <laughs> even went through there. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's true. I just, you know, bringing that up. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so Jocelyn does make a reference to the children prior to pulling all of this stuff. She um, does. A little she, foreshadowing. she says something like, um, sure. you'd be surprised or amazed about what kids can truly do. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it feeds into the, her kind of alpha mentality this is kind of like puri alpha you know how alpha has her mentality of how she feels about weakness and strength same thing for jocelyn she feels that um the reason that she mentioned about how kids can even learn quicker and even uh denise uh, one of the uh, executive producers mentioned this on talking dead of her philosophy is saying okay kids can do a lot of things they can yes they can possibly be easily manipulated but when you're standing in front of a kid kind of like how michonne was towards the end you know, you don't think a kid is a threat. You know, it's going to be hard for you to maybe kill a kid because you That's don't think exactly a kid's right. a threat. I mean, but these kids can do things that you have no idea because they're quick learners and they can potentially be easily manipulated. Yeah. So when they went back and showed uh, when they when they brought all the kids back, it was cool to see their their hideout where it showed like survival guides of how to how to gut a deer, how to eat, you know, kill a rabbit, how to skin an animal. Yeah, how to yeah. skin an animal. So. It was very interesting of just how Jocelyn was, you know, uh, teaching these kids. Now, one thing I found interesting was how Jocelyn mentioned, well, the other adults didn't make it. The other adults broke. (laughs) I don't think that happened. (laughs) I think Jocelyn probably wound those kids up and had those kids kill those adults to Uh, prove how strong they are. I don't think we need to know at this point. We didn't need to know. I don't think we need to know Jocelyn's backstory because it's not relevant to the season. But it'd be interesting to know her backstory as yeah. to why she did this, why she lost faith. I mean, this seems like a normal person when you first meet her, someone that is really close to Michonne. And the fact that she did this to Michonne just... Right. But I think it's a way for her to get into a place. You see a woman coming with kids. Yeah, yeah you're gonna, well, you know, and, and You're going to have empathy. And here's the th- thing, and you mentioned this, but it's kind of like the terrorist effect. Like, Terrorist organizations will use children. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's with, child soldiers with bombs. Right. There's um, child soldiers in this world today. Yeah. And because of the simple fact that it is mentally tough for a lot of people to kill a child. Yeah. Exactly. So, so. just bringing in kind of real world aspects to it, which is cool. So, 
Daryl and Michonne go out and try to search for Judith. They realize they're missing and they come across the area where they're being holed up. So they see a kid and they run after her and they get surrounded. Daryl gets shot with an arrow. Surprising, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Michonne is just so mortified. She's like, she's not going to turn her sword on these kids who are actually holding knives and who are about yeah, to kill her. They're, they're going to kill her and she you still know, can't do it. She can't do it. They knock them both out. And... This is where it kind of confuses me. So, like, okay, the branding of the X. Why? It didn't make sense. Because yeah. somebody mentioned in our comments, or I think even in a Walking Dead group uh, board, where maybe they branded them to kill them later. Well, if you brand somebody, they're wearing clothes. So are you really going to remember every person that you brand? It's not like cattle where you brand them and you can actually see the brand and well, you know. Not to mention, like, why would you want to brand someone to kill them later? I mean, that just proves that you're giving time for that brand to heal. I What's the point? I think what really the branding was was more of like an teaching the children, an initiation. Okay, because even before uh, before she uh, one of the kids branded Daryl, you can hear Jocelyn saying, "Be strong." Well, you yeah, know? yeah. Like, and this I is... think it's her training these children exactly. to, in, right. in, in a very dramatic situation Dark to way. overcome that dramatic situation yeah. and the emotions of that situation. So, yeah, I think this was only a training type deal for the children. Wasn't any type of, you know, it was used mm -hmm. in the story. Yeah, um, it was from Michonne's perspective. Yeah. So. so you know, in the end, uh, you know, they break free and they start searching and the kids kind of go on killer mode attack. They're coming after Michonne. Um, they, they, one kid slices her belly. Uh, she's still not killing him at this point. Not killing she's him at this holding point. holding him back. Right. Telling, asking him to stop. She offers them. You can come back to Alexandria. Yeah. We'll take care of you. Oh, and actually that was after she, she kills Jocelyn, of course. So well, Jocelyn's course. bashing her over the head with a two by four. She eventually stabs her through the leg and stab, just goes immediately stabs her in the heart with her sword. Yeah. And that's when she's like, you can come back to Alexandria. I'm thinking, uh, I don't think they're going to come, but if, <laughs> do you really want to ask these kids who almost killed you and almost probably could have killed but, your I mean, baby? That, that's just the mentality of that she did not want to kill them. As, them. She, didn't she didn't truly see them as a threat. No. I mean, she, yeah, it was just so hurting. But then one of the kids said, go kill her kids. We'll hold her off. And one of the little girls starts running towards this trailer where these where Judith and the other Alexandria kids are, ready to kill. But Michonne keeps yelling at her, just, no, don't. And the kid, what I loved about it, the kid stopped and turned every single time. You know, the kid, instead of thinking about what Jocelyn's teachings were, instead of going in there and just killing them all. And it seemed... The, the kid kind I, of had maybe a little... I, I think you're right. Because hesitation. that was the same kid that was doing the branding. That was the I kid, who, right. that was the kid think, who branded Michonne. Yeah, I think that, that that particular child was maybe in the beginning of her training with mm -hmm. Jocelyn. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I have firm belief that... If it was any of the was, others? It, yeah, exactly. They would have went in there and killed them exactly. immediately. But I love just kind of... So it kind of ties into also current timeline where um, eventually Judith goes missing in the current timeline. And it... It's kind of like segueing, okay, when Michonne is out there searching for Judith and killing just walkers, you're seeing also her coming to the point, I have to kill these kids now. Yeah. And she starts killing them. And it's kind of going back and forth, showing the pain on Ju on Michonne's face, killing kids in worry to the pain in current time of just killing regular walkers. But she's desperately trying to find to judith find judith yeah you know. the, re the whole reason why she's trying to find judith is because again she closes herself off when yeah. daryl and lydia come mainly lydia yeah. um, and doesn't want to help them get to the kingdom mm -hmm. um, again shutting herself off but she is unwilling to tell judith why she's shutting herself off right uh, for fear that judith either might think something bad of her um, because judith doesn't know what happened that day. Well, it turns out, yes, Judith, Judith does know. Um, and it, it was, I think, a little help from Negan. <laughs> that, I loved that conversation with Negan. Poss yeah, I mean, I, well, Negan wouldn't know about that situation. In that no, not general, at all. But, but, but does, Negan knows what type of person Michonne is. Exactly. And, and Negan, yeah, so Michonne is, you know, desperately trying to find uh, Judith. She sees that Judith took her gun. Rick's gun, technically. Um, and she goes down to the cell. Now, what's cool is that Negan knows exactly. Eventually, he's like, I know why you're down here. You're trying to get information from me because you don't know where she is. Mm -hmm. But Michonne is trying, is getting pissed at him because Negan's like, look, I'm honest with her. 
I, I told her about the bad, I told her that she's as badass as Carl and how Carl broke in and killed all my men. I told him about how her daddy freaking ninja sliced my throat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I tell her this stuff and Michelle got upset because she's like, why are you telling her? Because you don't think I, I haven't told her yet. Because I'm not ready. Well, it's then like, I love the jab that she yeah. was like, did you tell him what you did to Negan and, or, and uh, Glenn? Glenn and Abraham? He's and, like, yeah. And he did. He told, he's told her everything. He's like, she didn't like it, but I told her. Yeah. Because Judith has a mentality of, look, okay, yeah, she doesn't know a lot what's going on. She's seeing everything and hearing about it, but she wants to help. The, the, the whole philosophy is she's very sad. And she mentions this to Michonne, like, why did why did we stop loving Daryl, Maggie, Carol, the kingdom? Like, I understand you did what you did. And I remember that day when I was little and you killed all those kids. But you said you want to protect the ones that you love. Okay, I get me and RJ, mm -hmm. but you love everyone. And so why, why are, are you, you not, not protecting them exactly. like you're protecting me? And when she was, I loved that tie-in. When they were talking great. at Carl's grave. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I love the tie-in. I thought it was brilliant of how they did that because yeah. it makes sense as, okay, why did she cut herself off? Well, because of this horrific thing that she went through, but she's more thinking about, one, the child inside of her growing, almost about to be born, and little Judith because she lost Rick. Mm -hmm. So she's like, in a way... Screw everyone else. I want to protect what I have here, and that's yeah. it. See, another reason, and I brought this up in, earlier in the video, another reason that I was thinking maybe she shut herself and, and Alexandria out away from the other communities is because they didn't help in the time that she needed them. Um, it didn't seem like mm. they were around. Um, but she can't blame them for that. I don't, we don't know. The yeah, situation. and the more I yeah. think about it, you know, it's not like she could walkie-talkie him and saying, "Hey, I'm captured." Right. Um, it's not their fault. Um, but yeah, I just I don't know. I mean, it, it was thinking of some reason as to why she would shut herself and Alexandria right. away out of the out of the communities, and the way they tied it in was perfect. And I think you know, even though we didn't get confirmation as okay, what was the true beef between Michonne and Maggie? I think that is probably part of it. After this event, Michonne cut herself off, which then she wasn't trading with the hilltop. She wasn't trading with the kingdom. And I think that probably made people resent her to the whole idea of the charter and what she, everyone thought that they well, were building. And, and it makes sense, too, you know? because she wasn't telling the other communities why she was shutting herself off. Exactly. And so it probably pissed them cause, off. Because in a way... She was kind of ashamed of what she did. Mm -hmm. she, oh, killed, yeah. she killed she children. She killed kids. I mean, she even says to, I think, I, Negan maybe? That like, she's saying, she's talking to someone, I forgot who it was, and she says, I've done things for this community. Lydia. That, that, yeah, that I she was telling am Lydia ashamed that. of doing, but I did them to protect, protect people. And she said she's So okay she has that. guilt and she's ashamed yeah. of it. Why, if she if she's not even going to tell Lydia or or anyone else, what makes you think she's going to tell uh, the kingdom and the hilltop? Right. So this, like I said, we didn't get true confirmation as the beef, but I think that's probably part of it. But um, it was amazing. I mean, uh, and then after they had their little talk, you know, Michonne said, I get what you're saying. You know, we have to protect everyone that we love. And so her and Judith, you know, jump on a wagon. They start heading towards the kingdom. They run into Daryl and crew. <laughs> Um, and, uh, they start handing the kingdom, but wait, there are whisperers about <laughs> <laughs> I two lone whisperers for, for a man. moment. I thought they were going to, they, we knew they were looking on one of the communities. I, I didn't know. I it thought was, it was going to be Alexandria. Yeah. No, the kingdom. It's the kingdom. We must inform Alpha. Oh my God. Stay tuned for our predictions. We have a couple awesome theories on that. Some cool photos that they just, a lot of promotional photos that they released, but stay tuned for Before our predictions. this, we did get a little, um, for next um, episode. a little conversation that we talked about with Lydia, um, Michonne and Lydia, and Michonne is basically encouraging her to kind of leave the group. Yeah, that conversation was cool. Um, basically saying if it was, what did she say? If it was only just me you know, if I only had to worry about risking my own life to save I, to, uh, to save a lot of others to protect other people, mm -hmm. I would just leave. I just leave, <laughs> which pretty much is saying like, just make the decision and get the hell out. Get out of here. You know, I mean, she because she even says, "I can see you care about 
Henry, mm-hmm. you know, and she knows how vulnerable, kind of vulnerable Henry is. And that's, that's what a lot of people's stink is with Henry is, okay, look at her, <laughs> uh, uh, the one lady from Talking Dead, the one, the funny black lady or whatever that's on there. I can't remember, Vivian or whatever her name is. Yeah. That she's on there. She was like, okay, uh, Henry is probably getting his soft side from King Ezekiel. Because oh. Ezekiel is a softie. Yeah. Not from Carol. No, 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 God, no. <laughs> Not from Carol. So she's like, that's what frustrates me about Henry. He's got his soft side from his father, from uh, Ezekiel, technically. So, um, you know, that, and, but, uh, you know, everyone compares him to Carl. I mean, Carl, he wouldn't, that's a whole different thing. Yes. Carl it, would have be a completely different, he, he was strong. Yeah, yeah, Carl, Carl was strong. Yeah, he if he was still on the show, he would have fallen for Lydia. Possibly if they would have stuck with it, I would have loved that. But, I don't, but anyway, anyway, um, uh, I think that's it. So yeah, the Michonne conversation with Lydia, I thought it was really good. Um, I, I don't, nothing's going to happen. Lydia is not going to leave because if she does, Henry's going. Yeah, so yeah, they're not going to get in that situation know, again where Daryl's like, I got to go after this kid again. <laughs> that was simply to you know put in there to instill that Michonne is still hesitant to help people, right? Um, and it tied in with the story that was happening with yeah. Jocelyn. Um, but yeah, in the end, I think a dark that story. It was a very dark story, it and was. Um, in the end, though, it was something that needed to be told to it was a conversation between judith and michonne that needed needed to happen in order for michonne to realize that you're right i i need to help these other communities the one thing i did hate though is always like judith seems to always be going out on her own and she's still alive (laughs) (laughs) you know what i mean yeah she's a badass but it's like She's going out on her own. Like, really? Well, look, here's the deal, too. Come on. Like, she, she's going out alone with that gun. With that a gun, gun and, a, and a samurai sword. That gun is well, a, a half samurai a sword. A big gun. Yeah, it is. I'm sorry, but I don't think a child like that I is going to be able to handle that type of gun. The recoil would probably knock her on her ass. You'd be like this. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. But it's a TV show. Who knows? But, maybe. You know, just the, just the thought of her going out on her own all the time. But Carl like, gets bit in the woods. Yeah. After so many years of fighting walkers. They could have had Judith die in that episode. She could have got bit. She did get scratched. Maybe she'll turn. No. <laughs> no, but amazing episode, guys. I'm really glad they finally closed the chapter on these X scars that we saw that was driving us crazy and having us go crazy on theories of what would happen. But it tied into finally Michonne allowing herself to not really let her guard down, but fully understand the magnitude of, I love everyone. I need to help protect everyone yeah. and not just I think my it, own two I kids. I think it was a great way. Unfortunately, is she going to bear the burden once we find out that you know, heads on pikes and, and, and she didn't protect them. Um, what's, the what's, what's going to happen then? The, the biggest thing will be, what do they think about Lydia? Yeah. But either way, stay tuned for our predictions on that. Um, but let us know your thoughts of episode 14 scars guys. Um, were you happy with the story of the X scars and how those came to be? Um, how frightened were you when you knew that Michonne was going to be killing kids? You know, I turned my head away a couple times. <laughs> no one, they weren't going to show, of course, her killing those kids. Do you, do you, but just the fact. One more thing. Uh, do you think it's weird that we're mm, six to eight years away from the start of the apocalypse? And some of those children were quite young. Yeah, they were young. Which means that Jocelyn probably would have had to have them when they were babies. Mm-hmm. Just, yeah, just weird. <laughs> and, and, anyway. also, and also, the little girl who uh, ran away, who actually didn't kill She's the gone. kids, she ran away. Um, since that was a flashback, do you think she uh, joined the Whispers? <laughs> <laughs> you think she ran into the Whispers? You think she became a Whisperer? What's her name? Oh, I can't remember her name. Do they say her name? They Michonne yells her name numerous times in the okay. episode. I can't remember. I, I can't remember her name either. But we're not going to probably hear from the Whisperers. Unless she's one of the... I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I would think that cool they theory. would come after Alexandria sooner than... Probably. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, let us know what you thought of episode 14, Scars. Uh, if you're new to the channel, give it a thumbs up. Follow us at Knock Nation on Facebook and Twitter and subscribe to the channel. Yes, indeed, guys. We'll see you guys for our predictions video. And um, stay tuned for a cool announcement on that for the remaining two episodes. I'm Darrell. And I'm Josh. We're Knock Nation. We're, We're out. out.